this segment of Let's Talk Stocks. I'm Fitzroy Prendergast and this morning we have a very interesting personality with us. We have Mrs. Kadil Matnod Hermit. She is a manager of depository and registrar services at the JCSD. Welcome ma'am. Thank you Fitzroy. It's a pleasure to be here with you this morning. Absolutely. Let's talk a little bit about T plus one. Sure. And uh, tell the viewers what is T plus one? Okay, so T plus one is referring to the settlement cycle. So when a trade takes place on the floor of the exchange, uh, it is a time that it takes to be finalized. So T plus one refers to trade date plus one day. So the trade will be settled, it will be finalized in one day. Excellent. How does this materially impact somebody who is doing business at the JCSD? Um, in a nutshell, explain how does that, that help? to move things along. Okay, so first of all, I need to say that currently we're at T plus two. So trade set to two days after. In this move to T plus one, the investors are gonna be benefiting because their trades will settle much faster. So those who are purchasing shares, they will actually get the shares faster one day earlier because we're moving from T plus two to T plus one. And those who have sold their shares, they are now able to get their cash one day earlier. So it benefits the investors. Excellent. How does weekend impact that though? Is How does? A weekend. So for okay. instance, you know, Saturday, Sunday, etc. So if I buy um, something on Friday, um, mm -hmm. do, does the weekend count? or not all right the weekend doesn't count so once it comes on to settlement it is working days so holidays don't call we don't count holidays we don't count weekends just working days uh so pretty much it is uh, let's say you purchase shares on a friday and then uh, Currently, it would settle two days after, so that would settle on Tuesday. Right. But uh, with the, what we are coming with now, T plus one, trades will be settled one day after, so they will settle on Monday. Excellent. Now, why the need to move to T plus one? Um, we were at T plus two, right. certainly ahead of some of the major markets. Um, why the need, do you think? All right, so what we try to do at the JCSD is to keep in harmony with global markets. And what we find is that the major markets, they are moving to T plus one. So, well, China is already at T plus, it's at T plus zero. Wow. India moved to T plus one last year. The US and Canada, they are gonna be moving to T plus two in May. And uh, in particular, Canada will be moving on May 27 and US on May 28. And so we are going to be moving as well. We're going to be moving on May 27. So to harmonize with global markets. But there are also other benefits because in moving to T plus one, you are looking at operational efficiency as well. Because now it is required for JSE, JCSD to ensure that we're operating, you know, at an optimum level. And the brokers themselves are going to also have to look at their procedures to ensure that they are able to settle the trades one day earlier. It reduces risk as well because, you know, anything that takes too long, it will um, increase the 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 the, the um, possibility of a risk so it reduces settlement risk it reduces credit risk and it increases market liquidity one of the things i'd love to explore with you in this interview is a journey because i remember when we were at t plus three yeah um, not so long ago yes and it seems to me just as a lay person that we've rapidly moved to t plus, rapidly <laughs> moving to t plus one explain the journey from t plus three to now well, what I'll say is that we are always keeping with global trends. So years ago, we were at T plus five. You know T plus three, but we were at T plus five years ago, and then we moved to T plus three. And then in 2017, we moved to T plus two. Globally, persons are trying to, or the exchanges, depositors are trying to ensure that they keep things moving more smoothly. And so they are moving to T plus one. It might seem quick, but I mean, in this world that we are in now, everything is fast paced. So we are just moving with the global trend. So pretty much that has been our journey, keeping ahead or keeping in line with what is happening globally. How does this, um, the, the staff at the JCSD that is going to be ensuring that if I purchase, I get the settlement in, you know, one day. Mm -hmm. It 
keeps them on their toes, I would presume. Mm -hmm. Certainly, um, there's no time to fool around because as soon as somebody has expressed an interest in your purchasing, they need settlement. Um, does this put extra pressure on the staff itself, the frontline staff, and how do you mitigate against that? Well, what I'll say is that we use technology to ensure that everything flows smoothly. So I wouldn't say that it would be putting any extra pressure on the staff of the Jamaica Stock Exchange or the Jamaica Central Securities Depository because most of all of our settlement functions, they are automated. But it's just that in preparing for T plus one, we've had to sit and, and, and examine our procedures and examine our systems to ensure that everything that needs to be updated is updated so that everything flows smoothly. So it's not really any added pressure. It's just a matter of looking at how we create the efficiencies and ensuring that our procedures are moving along with the plan. Excellent. I know recently you had a meeting with the brokers yes. um, to sensitize them and so on. How are they feeling? Are they feeling comfortable that we're ready to go? Everything's done is, you know, we're ready to go T plus one. How are they feeling? Well, we sensitized the brokers last year. So this particular meeting that we had in January mm -hmm. last week was really to tell them what the plan is and to ensure that they understand everything that will be happening. So um, I believe that the brokers are ready to go. I mean, there are things that they will have to change in their systems, their procedures will need to be updated, things like their contract notes will be updated as well, but we are there to help them along and we have provided a plan for them. Um, so I believe we have done this before. Remember I told you that we did it in 2017. So uh, it's, it's pretty much the same. So it's really to just get them started and get them in that mood to move to T plus one along with us. I know that the, the Jamaica Stock Exchange is a leader in the Caribbean in terms of everything. Um, so I, would you give me an idea of where the rest of Caribbean exchanges are relative to the Jamaica Stock Exchange um, as we speak? Because Obviously, we are interconnected and certainly some people are buying shares that are in the Caribbean and so on and so on. Yes. How maybe you could just extend to tell me, like, how would that impact, you know, somebody who may be buying shares in Jamaica, but also buying shares in Barbados, Trinidad, etc., etc. Okay. All right. So when we moved to T plus two in 2017, Barbados and Trinidad did not move along with us. So they are still at T plus three. Wow. So based on what we, or discussions, uh, they are planning to move to T plus two sometime soon. Uh, so we are the exchange that we're moving to T plus one. I should say that Eastern Caribbean, they also settle um, some of their trades T plus one, some of their trades T on T. Uh, but as it relates to the markets that we, you know, the larger markets, Trinidad and Barbados, they are still at T plus three. How does it impact us here? Well, pretty much I would say there is no great impact because, I mean, we have been operating since 2017 on two different settlement cycles, Jamaica T plus two, Trinidad and Barbados at T plus three. How it will impact is um, as it relates to corporate actions, in particular, those that will, will require uh, trades to be settled at a particular point. So, you know, really brokers would have to bear in mind and issuers would have to bear in mind that um, Barbados and Trinidad have a different settlement cycle than what we have. But I wouldn't say there would be any great impact to investors or, or the market. As we conclude this interview, we want to look also at the whole question of let's look at t plus zero i mean the stock exchange <laughs> you told me uh, that china is already t plus zero and i i like the forward thinking of the exchange and i suspect that we're eyeing the t plus zero scenario um what sort of operational shift in a broad sense would be required to move to such a rapid change in terms of um ensuring that settlements are made from your for your experience well what i'd say to that first of all is let's take it a step, <laughs> a step at a time, time. let's okay. let's deal with t plus one first right. you know once we get to t plus one i think it will be a much smoother process um t plus zero yes it's something that uh, you know we are we are going to be looking at in the future but right now the focus is on t 
plus one and getting the trade settled. Final question yes. as I'm getting the rap, rap signal. Yes. Now, T plus one starts when? And tell me in a nutshell what the traders can expect and, and when can they expect it? All right, so T plus one, as I said earlier, is May 27, 2024. Mm -hmm. uh, prior to that, though, we're going to have to do conversions of a conversion of our system. So that will take place the Friday before, which is May 24. Yes, May 24. So we will do the conversion of our systems. I mean, the brokers would have already done their preparations and so on. So by May 24, they should be ready for us to just go live with T plus one on May 27. Fantastic. Thank you very much, Mrs. Skadil McNaught Hurtmith. Thank you again. And for it was me. a pleasure talking to you about T plus one. And you know, we may be having a discussion not too long after about T plus zero. I know you want to keep it a T plus one, <laughs> but I know the stock exchange is very active in the space and yes. trying to make sure that we are on the cutting edge of technology. So yes. thank you very much and all the best in your endeavors to move um, the JCSD forward. Thank you very much. Thank you. That's it for interview segment on Let's Talk Stocks. Join us next time for another very interesting interview.